Hello again, and welcome to part 3 of 2C3C Spy Guide. In this video, we'll be covering the mechanics and uses of cloaking and disguising. We'll talk about each of the three watches briefly, and then move on to disguises in general. For this guide, we'll be using a uniform chart system. For each watch, we'll talk about total cloak time, cloak recharge time from 0% to full, time it takes to cloak, time it takes to uncloak, the loudness of the noise made when uncloaking, and whether or not the watch benefits from ammo. So, let's get right into it with the default invisibility watch. This is considered by many as the best buy watch as it has no gimmicks. You push a button and you turn invisible until you push the button again or your cloak runs out. Here's a chart of the invisibility watch's stats. As you can see, you can stay invisible for 9 seconds and it takes 35.5 re seconds to recharge. It takes 1.2 seconds to cloak and 2.2 to uncloak. The sound when made when Uncloaking is relatively quiet, but it can be heard, and it benefits from ammo. This watch excels in ammo-heavy maps, or maps where you can abuse ammo spawns. Fallen weapons and destroyed sentries provide cloak for this as well, so there's often a way to get through a map with it while being cloaked far longer than the 9 second limitation. This watch can work offensively or defensively, and lends itself to aggressive gameplay. Typical usage involves cloaking to get behind an enemy team, gathering ammo, then killing key targets such as medic heavy combos, sentries, or troublesome demo men or soldiers. Now, don't forget that this watch has a delay before you become fully invisible, but we can often use this to our advantage. You will have to pop your cloak early going around corners, but you'll also be able to juke really easily. If you get found out, you can activate your cloak and run where the enemy expects you to go, then go in the complete opposite direction when you become fully invisible. 95% uh, of the time you will throw everybody off, and oftentimes you will find that they will leave themselves wide open to a backstab. As a general tip, you don't ever want to be completely cloak empty, as you then have zero means of reliable escape besides poor enemy aim. Having at least 25% cloak, unless a key pick depends on it, is advisable. This is easy to do if you pick up ammo or stand near your dispensers, as an enemy level 3 dispenser will regenerate your cloak faster than you use it if you were disguised. The cloak and dagger function similarly to the invisibility watch, in the sense that when you hit a button, you turn invisible. However, when using the cloak and dagger, your cloak only depletes when you're moving, rather than depleting simply for being cloaked. Here's the cloak and dagger chart. When running in a straight line, cloak only lasts you 6.6 .6 seconds at a running speed. It takes 15.3 seconds to recharge, 1.2 seconds to cloak, 2.2 seconds to cloak. Uh, it's relatively quiet when uncloaking, but it does not benefit from ammo. Now, most people don't really like this watch for three reasons. When running, the cloak only lasts two-thirds as long as the invisibility watch. It does not benefit from ammo, and its potential for permanent invisibility often causes a spy to play poorly. Now, this doesn't mean that it's a bad watch, or a, you're a noob for using it, but it isn't nearly as aggressive as the invisibility watch due to its limitations of moving longer distances and shorter amounts of time. It can be used offensively, but it takes a lot more patience and planning rather than reflexes and intuition, which some people don't like. Still, this watch excels at getting valuable picks, because you can get in the right place and then you can wait for the right time. Also, when combined with the Your Eternal Reward, proper timing can lead to clutch chain stabs. The rate at which cloak is depleted with the cloak and dagger depends on how fast you're moving. Running full speed will drain your cloak in 6.6 .6 seconds, crouch walking will drain it in 60, and standing still will cause it to last forever. In certain situations, it's recommended that you crouch walk instead of starting and stopping, so you have the option of moving out of the way if an enemy appears. For juking, the invisibility watch concepts apply to this as well. Cloak, turn a corner, then run in the opposite direction. You have less cloak to work with, but you also have the ability to just stand there and wait for the enemy to pass you by. Once again, 25% cloak is advisable as the self-imposed limit. If you run out of cloak with the cloak and dagger, it won't automatically uncloak you. Instead, you will appear semi-invisible, similar to getting bumped into, so it's pretty much a dead giveaway. Also, by leaving yourself some cloak, you give yourself the ability to move and not reveal yourself should someone happen to come your way. Like the invisibility watch, you can stand next to an enemy dispenser indefinitely if you need health. However, the only way to regenerate cloak with the cloak and dagger outside of standing still is using the Le Tendre. The Dead Ringer functions completely differently from the invisibility watch and the cloak and dagger. 
Instead of being activated directly by the spy, the Dead Ringer activates when the spy takes damage with it out. The spy will cloak instantly, a death sound will be played, the feed kill will say that the spy died, and a ragdoll corpse will fall to the ground. Once activated, the cloak will last 6.5 seconds and take 16 seconds to recharge. It has an instant cloak time and a 2.2 uncloak time. It has a very loud and very distinctive uncloak sound. It benefits from ammo, though not as much as the invisibility watch. Out of all the watches, the Dead Ringer has the strangest mechanics. When you click the mouse, you don't turn invisible, yet you are limited to what you can do, as if you were cloaked. When the watch is activated, you enter a kind of super stealth, where damage taken is reduced by 90%, and bumping into people does not cause you to flicker. The super stealth only lasts 6.5 seconds, then falls off. This means that if you gather ammo while cloaked to extend the time that you are cloaked, you will enter normal stealth eventually, taking 100% damage and shimmering upon collision. If you uncloak with more than 40% cloak left, you will drop to 40% cloak left, so you can't spam the watch, and most of the time when gathering ammo, it's a good idea to uncloak first, unless doing so will kill you. Also, it has the loudest uncloak sound of out of all the watches, and it is very, very noticeable. However, unlike the other watches, the fall of sound of the Dead Ringer is exponential rather than linear. It's also affected by line of sight, so it's very wise to uncloak far away from the enemy and around a corner. The Dead Ringer trades some of the spy's stealth abilities for deception and survivability. It is an ultra-aggressive watch that allows the spy to go for suicide backstabs and survive. As a warning, the Your Eternal Reward is lackluster when coupled with the Dead Ringer because you cannot disguise or stealth, so you effectively lose all ways to get behind an enemy team without running in without a disguise, and using the Dead Ringer to cloak around them, which is painfully obvious. The best way to get behind an enemy team is to disguise as a friendly class, such as a pyro, die in a convincing way, then get to a safe spot, uncloak, redisguise, etc. When you die with a friendly disguise ra with the Dead Ringer, it drops a ragdoll corpse of the class you're disguised as, rather than a spy corpse. Dead Ringer spies run around the enemy team and rely less on actually cloaking and more on manipulation of field of view and disguising. Dead Ringer is a high risk, high reward playstyle, but it's one of the most tanky specs in the game, as you can survive certain death every few seconds with a 90% damage reduction. The default knife works best for this watch, as the Year Eternal Reward just adds to its weaknesses and it negates the Kanai's strength. Cloaking is by far the most reliable defensive mechanism the spy has. An unaware enemy is a dead enemy, and complete invisibility helps immensely. Disguises are very unreliable, as they typically fool only distracted or clueless enemies. Still, they are required if you are to fit into an enemy team, as a red heavy is much likelier to kill you if he sees a blue spy, rather than a red pyro. Now, when you disguise, smoke and your team color surround you. You disguise as the class you picked, then the smoke disappears. You have changed into the class when the large outline of the spy is at its largest, and the smoke disappears when the outline is gone. The smoke is painfully obvious, and will continue to perform its animation even if you turn invisible during it. However, the smoke will not appear if you are cloaked, so it's incredibly important that you disguise only if you are cloaked, if possible. We can use this concept for a more advanced technique in which we cloak, disguise, then uncloak rapidly. This suppresses the smoke animation and sound, and it actually causes the disguise animation to be falsely faster as your disguise is complete when the outline is at its largest, rather than its smallest, which is when the smoke disappears. When using the Dead Ringer, you don't have the ability to suppress the smoke on command, so you have to be especially careful to wait until your disguise is fully complete before making an appearance. If your Dead Ringer activates while you're in the middle of disguising, the smoke will continue its animation, and it will be very, very obvious that you're not dead, so make sure you're in a safe place before disguising. If this does happen, it's best to make use of the damage reduction and just get the hell out. When disguised, the spy's hitbox doesn't change. As you can see from this picture from tf2wiki.net, certain disguises will decrease the chance you get hit. Disguising as the scout, soldier, pyro, demo man, or engineer will greatly reduce the chance of you getting headshot, which adds some situational benefits to these disguises. Still, it's not hugely important that you disguise as one of these classes if the enemy team has snipers, but it's recommended that you stick with Pyro Engineer if they do. Well, that about wraps up this week's video. Sorry about the delay, I'm a bit swamped at the moment. <laughs> Once again, leave a comment or a question, give it a thumbs up, or even subscribe. 
Uh, I'm not sure completely what part 4 will be, but I'm thinking we may cover the different knives and guns and how well they work with the different watches. Uh, also, feel free to add me on Steam and drop me a message or an invite. You know, I'm willing to talk to you guys and show you anything that you might have. So, be my guest and add me. And um, before we go, I'd also like to say that it's me and my girlfriend's one-year anniversary today, and I'd like to thank her for putting up with my gaming addictions and giving me one of the best years of my life. And I love you, Allie.